please. Chapman, Jones, Palin, Idol, and Gilliam. Melodies from those minds and lips helped bring British comedy to the forefront of the world consciousness between the late 60s and the early 80s. Let us ride to Camelot! Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Monty Python songs. I got the trees on where our heels suspend his and a bra. I wish I'd been a girly just like my dear mama. For this list, we're choosing the most beloved and iconic songs from the Monty Python comedy troupe, whether they're from film, television, live performances, or comedy albums. Yeah. What do you mean? Uh, I don't like spams! Spam, 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 spam. Number 10. The Tale of Sir Robin, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Bravely bold Sir Robin brought forth from Camelot. He was not afraid to die, oh brave Sir Robin. Bravery is the most common quality associated with knights, particularly King Arthur's knights of the round table. He was not in the least bit scared to be mashed into a pulp, or to have his eyes gouged out and his elbows broken. However, in Monty Python and the Holy Grail, Bravery is seemingly not Sir Robin's strong point. His head smashed in and his heart cut out and his liver removed and his bowels unplugged and his nostrils raped and his bottom burnt off and his penis... That's, that's, uh, that's enough music for now, lads. Because as he rode away from Camelot, he not so bravely runs away from a three-headed knight. He's he buggered off. off. So he has, he's scarfed. While each head debates what it's craving, murder, kindness, and tea, respectively. Oh, all right, all right, all right. All right. We'll kill him we'll first, first, and then have tea and biscuits. biscuits. Robin makes his exit serenaded by minstrels who herald his cowardice and immortalize it in an embarrassingly catchy melody. Robin ran away. No! Bravely ran away, away. I didn't. Number nine, Christmas in Heaven, Monty Python's The Meaning of Life. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's truly a real honorable experience to be here this evening. Showcased on a larger-than-life stage, this song seems sincere and almost beautiful when it begins. That is, until the dancing bare-chested angels make an appearance. All the children sing, it's Christmas in heaven, hark, hark, those church bells ring. The sweet crooning of the singer is overshadowed by the typical Python need to shock, and make a controversial statement. Yes, I walk headphone sets and the latest video game. Not that the performance doesn't deliver, though. It's still fun and is the perfect segue to the end of the film, when one truly discovers the meaning of life. Well, that's the end of the film. Now here's the meaning of life. Thank you, Brigitte. Number eight, sit on my face, Monty Python's Contractual Obligation Album. Sit on my face and tell me that you love me. Previously appearing on Monty Python comedy albums and performed and released in the concert film Monty Python Live at the Hollywood Bowl. Sit on my face and let my lips embrace you. This tune was later featured in an animated film celebrating the life of the late Graham Chapman. Sit on my face and let my lips embrace you. I'll sit on your face and then I'll love you too. The film, entitled A Liar's Autobiography, showcased the popular song as a musical number in Python's traditional crude and crass but humoristic fashion. We find your American beer is a little like making love in a canoe. It's close to water. Number seven. Bruce's philosopher's song, Matching Tie and Handkerchief. Hey, Manuel Kant was a real piss and who was very rarely stable. Imagine attending a university named Woolloomooloo where the classes, particularly philosophy, are taught through music. There's nothing nature couldn't teach about the rising of the wrist. Socrates himself was eminently pissed. In this Eric Idle pen tune, Countless philosophical greats are called out for their attachment to the bottle. Oh, come on! Regardless of the knowledge and innovation they were responsible for providing our society, no one is spared the razor wit of the python in Bruce's Philosopher's Song. And Rene Descartes was a drunken father, drink, therefore I am. 
Number six, Galaxy Song, Monty Python's The Meaning of Life. Listen to this. Whenever life gets you down, Mrs. Brown, and things seem hard or tough, and people are stupid, obnoxious or daft, and you feel that you've had quite enough. Inspiring and entertaining, as well as informative, this specific melody reminds everyone that each of us is a very small part of the world as a whole. The sun and you and me and all the stars that we can see are moving at a million miles a day. Though a man who rolled out of a refrigerator is delivering the scientific information, the entire tenor of the galaxy song is surprisingly wonderful and lighthearted. Our galaxy itself contains a hundred billion stars. It's a hundred thousand light years side to side. It bulges in the middle, 16,000 light years thick, but out by us it's just 3,000 light years wide. The Earth is shown to be the fantastical and beautiful place it is, even throughout the birth of the world scene. <sighs> Makes you feel so sort of insignificant, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Number five, every sperm is sacred, Monty Python's The Meaning of Life. There are Jews in the world. There are Buddhists, there are Hindus and Mormons, and then... Sung to a room overflowing with children to emphasize the Catholic ideal perpetuated by the lyrics. I'm a Roman Catholic, and have been since before I was born. This song aims to mock the concept that every drop of sperm should produce a child. Every sperm is According to this sketch from The Meaning of Life, this is a possible scenario. God shall make them pay for each sperm that can't be found. However, finding space for all of those blessed children would undoubtedly be more of a challenge than their creation. Camelot! Camelot! It's only a model. Number four, Knights of the Round Table, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. We're Knights of the Round Table, three dance when we're able. We do routine to call the scenes with footwork in bed cable. We dine well here in Camelot, we eat ham and jam and spam a lot. Rowdy and rousing. This song is a perfect example of Monty Python fun and frivolity. Between our quest, we seem to invest and impersonate our cable. It's a bit free life in Camelot. I have to push the pram along. The physical humor used in the film, including having the knights dance, twirl, and pose, adds some additional silliness to the storyline's overall feeling. Even the prisoner chained in the cells below the Great Hall cannot resist clapping his hands along to the music raucously performed by Camelot's knights. <laughs> Number three, Spam Song, Monty Python's Flying Circus. Spam, 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 spam. Since they have already conquered the Green Midget Cafe, Vikings must now turn their sights towards another location to spread their love of their favorite canned food. I'm having spam, 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 baked beans, spam, spam, and spam. So in this Flying Circus sketch, their cries for spam, 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 Echo in a way that could be interpreted as a war cry. That is, if they weren't chanting about a processed pre cooked meat product. Number two, the lumberjack song. Monty Python's Flying Circus. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. I sleep all night, I work all day. What begins as a man's macho homage to the art of cutting down trees 
rapidly and unexpectedly turns into a revelation for all characters involved in the Lumberjack song. I cut down trees, I skip and jump, I like to press wildflowers, I put on women's clothing and hang around in bars. His confession that he enjoys dressing in drag, wearing high heels and a bra. I cut down trees, I wear high heels, suspendies and a bra. Causes the Lumberjack's wife to leave him and his friends to throw fruit at him. <laughs> Maybe singing about it wasn't the best way for him to air his secret. Though it sure made for a whole lot of laughs on our part. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Isn't it awfully nice to have a penis? Isn't it frightfully good to have a dong? It's swell to have a stiffy, it's divine to own a dick. From the tiniest little tadger to the world's biggest prick. A la dee dee, a one two three, Eric the half a B. A B C D E F G, Eric the half a B. The decomposing composers there's nothing much anyone can do. You can still hear Beethoven, but Beethoven cannot hear you. Number one, always look on the bright side of life, Monty Python's Life of Brian. Always look on the bright side of life. While we could have picked the film's title track, Brian's Song, for our list. It's this anthem of positivity that wins the crown. Always look on the light side of life. For it's both uplifting and heartwarming, while still featuring the fun and irony one comes to expect from Monty Python. Despite the trials and tribulations that Brian and his fellow men endure. Life's a piece of shit when you look at it. Life's a laugh and death's a joke, it's true. No cross is too heavy to bear when one tunes into this epic hymn of happiness. So whether you're hung up or hung over, this melody is guaranteed to brighten up your day, and that's why it comes out on top. Do you agree with our list? Family entertainment, bollocks. What are your favorite Monty Python songs? For more fascinating top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. And finally, here are some completely gratuitous pictures of penises to annoy the censors and to hopefully spark some sort of controversy, which it seems the only way these days to get the jaded, video-sated public off their f***ing asses and back in the sodding cinema.